the single responsibility principle, which is standing for the S in the solid design principles, essentially states that a single module or class should be responsible for a single piece of the functionality of the system, which is commonly rewritten to that it should do a single thing. But the question is then, of course, what is a single thing? Today I want to give you a short explanation which I find uh, very useful and which essentially is Robert C. Martin's explanation, uh, the guy also known as Uncle Bob. And essentially he re rewrites the principle uh, as such. So he says that a class or module should have a single reason to change. Now this wording is not massively different, but it's slightly different in nuance. So he talks about having a single reason, right? A, a cause of having to be changed instead of the, of the idea that the class or module should do a single thing. So in that sense, Bob Martin talks about what happens to the class in the future, whereas the single responsibility is traditionally stated in terms of uh, what it does currently. I want to slightly borrow one of his examples because I think it's very useful in understanding how to sort of slice the pie in what's to be considered a single unit. So he gives an example along something like the following lines. Assume that you have a system and then think about the different people that can come to your desk and ask you for changes that they want to impose on the system. So think about then what working roles these people have. So if, for example, say it's uh, kind of like an accounting system, it's a bookkeeping system online, right? So you might have a lot of financial reports. So a designer might come to you and ask you to redesign uh, a particular piece of a form, right? So move this entry field here and move this label field here and change the color of this thing and la 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 la, right? But a person from finance might ask you to add completely new fields, for example, might ask you to add a new calculation. Say that there's a, the law changes and now suddenly all reports need to include such and such a number. So thus they ask you to include that number, right? There are overlaps here, of course, right? In adding the number that the finance guy asks you for, of course, you have to also perform some design. But the point is that these are different reasons. It's entirely possible that you add the new finance calculation, you, you, you implement the change that the finance person is asking for, and that the designer is completely happy about that, right? <clears throat> but of course, this reasoning is very limited to the idea of work roles and uh, people coming and asking you for changes. But if you're building your own, if you're running your own product, if you're a small start startup, or, or if you for some uh, reason don't actually interact with people who could give you change requirements in such a manner, then you of course have to envision these incoming change requests yourself. You have to say, hmm, how would we potentially want to change this in the future. If we talk about startups, for example, there's the concept of pivoting, right? So then you would think, how would we potentially want to pivot in the future? If the idea is, for example, we're currently doing this, but potentially we could be doing that, right? Th then that would be a reason to change. Changing from the first thing to the second thing would be a reason to change, so that change needs to be isolated somewhere. But let's generalize a bit. I'm not saying that you always have to think about work roles when, when considering whether you're adhering to the single responsibility principle or not. But I, I find that wording, the, the wording, a single reason to change, extraordinarily helpful. So think about it from this perspective. Another way to sort of slice the pie would be to say that when something happens in your system or, or the order of how things happen or why something happens, right, is not necessarily the same thing as, as how that particular thing happens, right? So why and when something happens <clears throat> is not necessarily the same thing as what the thing is that happens. So in terms of change, that would mean that it's not necessarily so that the order of the events changes at the same time as the contents of the events, right? So I myself am currently working on simulations, so the order in, in which certain events happen in the computer simulation can change independently of how they actually happen, right? So uh, assume we're 
uh, simulating ecology and we have a bunch of animals and we put them into some natural habitat and then the animals perform different things such as eating and sleeping and uh, drinking and hunting and whatever whatever so the order in which we simulate these events could change independently of what those events actually constitute so I'm pushing this example but but, but the point is that that has nothing to do with roles right working roles as in a company but it has everything to do with having different reasons to change. We might, given our domain that we are in, right? Given the thing that we're building, the thing that we're modeling, it's entirely plausible that we would want to change the order of things without changing the contents of the actual things and vice versa, of course. So that's all I wanted to say about uh, Bob Martin's explanation of the single responsibility principle. I'll uh, link some of his videos in the description, so be sure to check that out. And if you have other good explanations or ways to think about the single responsibility principle, I'd be glad to hear them. So uh, shoot me a comment and I would love to do another video on that particular way of looking at the single responsibility principle. That's it for today. Thanks for watching and subscribe for more.